Good morning, everybody, and good evening, wherever you're from. Thank you for joining us today, and welcome to the 13th Annual Stanford Africa Business Forum. I'm Deji Abe, co-chair for this year's forum. For those of us joining us for the first time, the Stanford Africa Business Forum is the largest student-led event here at Stanford University, and one of the most anticipated Africa-focused events around Silicon Valley. This year's theme is driving growth and innovation for the next decade. As we've seen, there is and has always been incredible innovation in Africa. And over the next decade, the continent is uniquely positioned to announce this innovation, to catalyze long-term transformational growth. Over the next two days, we have an exciting lineup of programming where we hear from leaders across sectors who will share their experiences and outlook related to growth and innovation. We have keynotes from Akeem Bello Sage, accomplished Nigerian entrepreneur and chairman of Metz Capital Partners, Amabala Johnson, senior partner at Telecom Capital and former Nigerian Minister of uh, Information Technology, and Edwin Materia, who is a global managing partner for Dialog Advisors. We also have several exciting panels, which will feature engaging discussions across sectors, ranging from private equity and infrastructure to fintech to entertainment and even a performance by arguably one of the biggest groups in Africa, music groups in Africa, South to Soul. Day two of the forum is a platform to showcase innovation on the continent. During the pitch competition, you'll hear from six unique entrepreneurs pitch their companies to a panel of judges. We are excited to hear the entrepreneurs highlight the solutions that they are building across various sectors, spanning from FinTech to healthcare, to logistics, and to edtech. The forum this year invites all of us to reflect on the promise of doing business in Africa by analyzing the success of companies on the continent and exploring the tremendous opportunities that lie ahead. We we'll explore questions such as how best can business leverage Africa's opportunities to propel the continent into a new phase of economic growth? We've seen companies like Florida Wave achieve unicorn status in just about five years. And we started to see a trend of global companies taking notice of opportunities that exist on the continent as we've seen with the recent exit of Paystack to Stripe. There is no doubt that there are opportunities to create wealth and prosperity, but how do we uniquely unnest these opportunities? Second, what continental and global shifts are we seeing today? And how do this translate into opportunities for businesses? Third, how do companies navigate the challenging business environment associated with doing business in Africa? Fourth, you know, what will it take to win in Africa, especially in this new normal we have today? These questions are more are what we aim to address in this year's forum. My hope is that you all are able to take away some valuable and tangible insights and make great connections while doing so at the same time. Thank you again for joining us from, at the forum this year, and thank you to all our sponsors for making this event possible today. Now let's go enjoy SABF 2021. Let's do it. Over to you now, Paula. Thank you, Deji, for that amazing jumpstart to the weekend. I hope you're all excited. I certainly am. Now let's make sure we go over our tech platform for the weekend. First, on your left-hand side, you will see several areas. The reception, which is a place for you to get an updated view of the schedule, see the speakers and their social media, and a link to our official website. Next is the main stage, which we're currently on, and this is where many of our sessions will be, including our keynotes, fireside chats, pitch competition, and a DJ performance um, by Salty Soul. On the right-hand side of the main stage, you will see a chat function. You can chat with the attendees and also click on someone's name in the chat and personal message them. You will see polls as a way to interact with the sessions when we launch them. Back to the left side, you will see panels which is where you go, concurrent panels, which will be happening. You will see the options to enter the panels closer to their start times. Feel free to bounce between the sessions as they are happening concurrently. Also, there's networking, which at the end of both days will have networking sessions where you can meet other attendees, chat, and connect. Last is the expo, where we are featuring our sponsors' booths, so please do check those out. We recommend you taking the time to connect with attendees here and through the networking um, session and the chat features. Also, do share your thoughts on social media with the hashtags SABF2021 and SABF Growth Innovation. At this juncture, 
I'd like to introduce you all to John Levin, Dean of the Stanford Graduate School of Business. John will be welcoming you all with a few words today. Over to you, John. Great, good, good morning. It's wonderful to see everyone here today. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking the Africa Business Forum leadership team for organizing today's event. Deji Abe and Onome Uwuba. And thank you to the rest of the team at the GSB's Africa Business Club for your involvement. Over the past 13 years, the Africa Business Forum has put a spotlight on the tremendous promise of growth and transformation in Africa. And it also provides an opportunity to review the Stanford GSB's continued commitment to playing a role in Africa's growth. I'd like to start by just observing that for anyone interested in business or studying business, understanding what is going on and the opportunities on the African continent is essential. It is the world's second largest population. It has still a high growth rate. The population is overwhelmingly young. Around 40% of Africans are under 15 years old. And over the next 30 years with current demographic trends, it could well be that 25 to 40% of the children born in the world will be born in Africa. It is also undergoing a digital transformation. The, becoming, the digital infrastructure is growing and the young people in the Africa, like in the rest of the world, are native to digital uh, innovation. And the implications of this for the future are immense once you start thinking about it. That is, the, the contribution that Africa could make and will make, hopefully, to the world's economy over the next 20 to 30 years is enormous. And the need for Africa to uh, contribute to certain global problems like the problem of climate change and transition to a low carbon economy is, uh, is absolutely critical. We can't solve those types of global problems without Africa and, uh, and, and Africa has to play an enormous role in those, uh, in those efforts. So we're gonna hear a lot about that today. And, but before we kick off the conference, I'd like to say something about Stanford's involvement with Africa. And I wanna highlight two things. The first is the contribution that African students play here at the Stanford GSB. And the second is that the efforts that we have through uh, Stanford SEED, the Stanford Institute for Innovation Developing Economies. And in a minute, you're gonna hear from Jesper Sorensen, the director of SEED, who will really tell you about the work that we're, that we're doing there. But let me start with students. Over the last seven or eight years at the GSB, we have gone through an effort to increase the pipeline of students from Africa in our MBA and MSX programs, catalyzed initially by an Africa Fellows program that was set up to both uh, both spread the word about Stanford throughout Africa and to bring students from Africa to the GSB with financial assistance. And that program has been a great success. And we've continued to, to um, try to get the word out about Stanford throughout Africa and to provide the financial assistance necessary to make it happen. And that has allowed us over the last seven or eight years to increase applications into the MBA program from Africa by about 45%. We now have students applying to the GSB from more than 90% of the countries on the continent and having them at the school enriches the discussions, enriches the perspectives, helps other students learn about the continent in such a profound way. And the students are of course, intimately involved in helping to get this conference off the ground. So it is really, really special to get to acknowledge them and the role that they play uh, at the school. Second, the, the Stanford Seed is an institute that was set up uh, almost a decade ago at the GSB with the goal of working with people on the continent to help uh, economic development. And SEED partners with entrepreneurs to build and grow enterprises, which in turn lift economies and communities and regions. 
And uh, we send faculty as part of the year-long seed transformation program, which is a business and leadership program for entrepreneurial companies and leaders uh, in Africa and also South Asia, send faculty to uh, teach uh, in Africa and also to now with remote technology to teach uh, remotely, uh, which has been a tremendous boon, in fact, for the program. And perhaps uh, Jesper will talk about that in a minute. And, um, and also uh, we send alumni and other uh, business people from the US who are involved with SEED as coaches and uh, volunteers to work with the companies. And that has been a tremendous point of pride for many of our alumni and for other people in our network who have had the opportunity to work with SEED uh, companies. And finally, we send students. And this last summer, we had 78 Stanford students who were SEED interns, including 54 Stanford GSB students, business students. And uh, they worked remotely last summer, but in normal times, they go to Africa and South Asia and work with the companies. And that has been a, a, such a special and a distinctive learning opportunity for our students, giving many, many students a chance to see what it's like to do business on the ground in Africa, to come back with a different perspective, with a much richer set of ideas about how business is done in uh, on the continent and in some cases to get ideas for companies to start or career opportunities to pursue after they graduate so uh, i want to um just say how excited i am about that whole suite of programs and the work of seed and you're going to hear more about it from jesper and also to say that if you'd like to hear more about it just three weeks ago the team the seed team launched a podcast it's called grit and growth it's aimed at sharing the experiences of entrepreneurs across Africa and South Asia, and it's really terrific. So you can find it at Grit and Growth. You can find it in any podcast uh, store. So um, it's really a point of pride for us at the GSB, the work that we do with the African continent, with the students who come from Africa, with entrepreneurs uh, on the continent, with business leaders, and that's what makes it so special to host this conference. So thank you, and I'm now going to turn it over to Afola, who's going to introduce Jesper Sorensen. Thank you, Dean John Levin. Next on our agenda for the day is the welcome address to be given by Jesper Sorensen, Professor of Sociology and Organizational Behavior and the Director of Stanford Institute for Innovation and Developing Economies, or SEED. Let's bring up Jesper. Thank you. Thank you, Fola, for that introduction. And thank you, uh, Dean Levin, uh, for your remarks and for, for uh, acknowledging the work that we're doing here at SEED. So uh, we're really excited to be here today as, as part of the Africa Business Forum. This is something that we have been uh, uh, helping support for, for quite a while at SEED, uh, for much of our history. And it's really a big part of what we are uh, about and what we are proud of. I think one way to see SEED is as a constellation uh, of program offerings, right? And so we have the Seed Transformation Program, we have other programs we're launching and so on and so forth. And that's something that we're very proud of and something we work very hard on. It's the core of our technology, so to speak. But I actually think if you want a simple metaphor about for what Seed is, is that Seed is really a bridge, right? Uh, much as Dean Levin discussed, we're really a bridge between high potential companies uh, throughout the African com continent and India uh, on the one hand and the Stanford community and Silicon Valley on the other. So one of the things that we know is that bridges are incredibly powerful vehicles uh, of social uh, and economic development because they facilitate connections, okay? Uh, they oftentimes, we oftentimes build bridges because we have a very specific purpose in mind. We have a specific kind of connection. And at Seed, we started with this idea of bringing what the GSB knows about leadership and scaling businesses to companies in Africa and in India. Uh, but over time, this bridge that we have built uh, has really become a vehicle for all kinds of connections uh, that we could never really have uh, imagined. And so, so let me give you uh, uh, some examples. And I'm just going to talk about some of the companies that we worked with uh, uh, throughout uh, our time here. So one good example is uh, Tarragon Group. Uh, so Tarragon is a company that could have been founded in Silicon Valley, really, but it was founded in Lagos. Uh, they are laser focused on a tremendous opportunity, consumer research in Africa. Uh, I think as many of you know, right, some estimates suggest that about uh, over half, at least, of Africa's economic activity uh, occurs in the informal economy. Uh, and that actually makes it very difficult for 
companies to know how to think about their product offerings and how to target them and so on and so forth, because so much of what we rely on in modern marketing and sales and so on and so forth is based on things like scanner data and all of these other things that you depend on, uh, where you depend on the formal economy. But really, of course, what's changing uh, is the growth of, of mobile technology and cell phones and smartphones and the growth of e-commerce. Uh, and that is creating all kinds of opportunities for data services. And Tarragon is squarely focused on that set of opportunities. They have employees across Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, and South Africa. So they're really already uh, using and working with programmers and staff all across the continent. And the growth opportunity that they're facing is 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 amazing, right? Like it's just the it's all there for the taking, um, but speed is of the essence. Uh, and of course, that that means, and we know that, right? In Silicon Valley, we certainly know that is if you're going to take advantage of those kinds of opportunities, you need capital, okay? And that's always one of the big challenges. So Tarragon CEO. Uh, Ilo Ume took part in the Seed Transformation Program, uh, and then he subsequently visited us here in California uh, at, at Stanford. And our executive director, uh, Darius Teeter, uh, spent a, a, quite a while with him and talking to him and eventually connected him to Maurizio Caio, a, a friend of the school, a former uh, GSB alum, uh, who runs a, a venture firm called TLCom Capital. Uh, and TLCom is unusual, and Maurizio's vision is really unusual in terms of really be fo being focused on tech investments uh, across sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, and we're happy, I mean, I think it was a really good outcome of this connection that TLCom has subsequently become Tarragon's first formal investor uh, with a $5 million investment uh, in the company. And I think both of them are really excited about this. So again, the ways in which what starts out as a classroom learning opportunity about scaling the company uh, has really become uh, a powerful uh, vehicle for, for uh, creating connections uh, and, 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 driving, and driving growth. Another good example uh, is Learn at Ease. Uh, Learn at Ease is a company also based in Nigeria. They are uh, working uh, in a very different realm from Tarragon. They're not focused on uh, uh, kind of uh, mobile technology per se, and they're not focused on data services or data analytics. They're focused on something that's really fundamental and really important, right, which is childhood education. And really in terms of focusing on tutoring and do and be giving parents the best tools available and the best tutors available to help their children uh, learn uh, and, and develop the kinds of skills that you need to succeed in the modern economy and in the modern world. Um, uh, Learn at Ease went through the Seed Transformation Program and then subsequently they worked with us to uh, uh, source one of the uh, interns that um, Dean Levin mentioned. So as, as one of the really big part of what our program is about is about taking Stanford students, right, and giving them this opportunity to work with companies uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa and in India. Uh, and one of the students who worked, uh, who did one of these internships last summer was Adrian Nigueros, a uh, MBA, a joint MBA Masters of Education student uh, here at Stanford. Uh, who had helped? Uh, who who worked with uh, Learn at Ease last last summer, uh, and helped them actually launch a new business opportunity or new business area that they called Next Step. Um, and what Next Step is focused on is helping students who are going through the the, the Learn at Ease program uh, really focus on international college applications, right? With a particular focus on applying for U.S. colleges. And so those of you who are based in the uh, United States and who have had children go through this process, you all know, right, what an elaborate process it is and how much kind of tacit knowledge is required to understand how the U.S. educational system work and what, what a good application looks like and what do colleges look, look for and what kinds of tests you need to take. And so thinking about uh, using the kind of knowledge that we have here uh, in uh, based on our own experiences and being able to transport that to a company like Learn and Ease and really help them develop those kinds of uh, programs, I think is a really powerful. Um, the CEO of Learn at Ease, Uche Urigewe, was really happy, ecstatic, I would say, with the results of this internship, right? It's a short engagement. It's just over the summer. It was all remote. 
Uh, but really, this they, they've kept the ball rolling on this program. And I think also much more uh, uh, inspiring in some ways is also the connection that has developed between uh, Uche and Adrian uh, and a really a close friendship. I think one of the things that our program offers is that is unusual for Stanford internships uh, is really the opportunity to work hand in hand and become close to a CEO, right? Many internships that you do as a Stanford student are going to be in big corporations where you're uh, it, working on interesting projects, but you're kind of, you know, one among many. And here, really, you have an opportunity to work face to face with the entrepreneur. And I know from talking to our interns that that is often an incredibly inspiring uh, opportunity. Uh, so Adrian has even been working with Ute's children over WhatsApp and advising them about the U.S. college application process. And hopefully, they will all get to meet soon. So I just want to say to all of you in the audience who might be at Stanford uh, and our Stanford students, the, the Stanford, in, the SEED internship applications are still open. They will be open for a, a couple more days. So we really do encourage you to go to our website uh, if you would like this kind of opportunity. The last uh, opportunity or the last company I want to talk about is Grace Co. Uh, Grace Co. is a food processing company who's mission is to make food simple, nutritious, and affordable. I think that one of the things that we know about uh, growth and, and, and kind of really helping people develop is just having a, a plentiful, nutritious food supply is so important in this process. Uh, the, the team at Graceco has been an incredibly avid user of Seed's coaching and consulting services. So this is something that we provide to companies that have gone through the program. They get access to volunteer coaches and uh, who, who work with them on a, on a long-term basis, but also volunteer consultants who work with them on kind of very specific projects. Um, through the Grace Coast coach, Don Bogue, they have not only worked on kind of developing their own leadership skills and their own uh, organizational development, but they've also initiated a whole range of uh, consulting projects on marketing, on finance, on operations, with volunteer consultants from really from across the world, right, sharing their expertise. Again, one of the powerful things about Zoom and other virtual technologies is we've really opened up the ability to collaborate on a global uh, basis. Uh, one of the people who helped on uh, one of the, uh, 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 applied to help on one of the marketing projects is actually Mark Phelps, who turned into, who went on to become a coach at Seed. Uh, and even though Mark didn't end up working on Grace Co's consulting project, um, we, uh, uh, we, um, he connected, Grayco to a food expert in Sacramento who really helped them adjust their formulations, what we would call recipes, right? And their baking processes in order to enable the flavor. Uh, and in a very important from a strategic perspective, it's also helped with the uh, extend the shelf life of their products. Okay. And so if you think about the challenges of distribution, right? Like extending shelf life is really important in terms of being able to get food out there. Subsequently, that relationship has developed and they, uh, Graceco has been connected to partner in food solutions who we have also worked with at Seed, which is a, a nonprofit that works with major food processing companies in the United States like General Mills uh, to help companies uh, in Africa develop their food processing technology. So I hope that you can take from all of these stories uh, uh, a sense of what it what happens when you build a bridge, right? Like what happens when you build a bridge is that traffic starts to flow in both directions, right? It's not just that we are sending our knowledge to these leaders and these companies. We are doing that. And that's, I think, a very important part of what we do. But so much of what we're getting out of it is about what's flowing back, okay? So many of those examples I just gave um, are about the ways in which the companies who have taken part in the Seed Transformation pro Program really have benefited from the connections that we have created through Seed. But I also want you to think about, hopefully, that the ways in which all these connections uh, have benefited and flowed back to, to the people who have worked with them. If you talk to our coaches, if you talk to our consultants, if you talk to our student interns, if you talk to our staff and faculty, what we will learn is the many ways in which they have benefited from that flow of information, of knowledge, of relationships, the lessons about entrepreneurial grit 
and determination, the insights into these amazing opportunities that are available. And most importantly, I think the friendship and connection uh, across continents. So the Africa Business Forum, where you are joining us today, is another vehicle for building these uh, connections, which is why SEED is such a proud sponsor of this event. I want to thank the student leadership team for doing such a great job of putting together today's program. I want to thank the SEED staff uh, for, for all the support and work that they have put into this. Uh, I'm sure that there's much that all of you are going to learn in sort of just download mode and just listening uh, to our speakers. and. Uh, uh, understanding what their insights are. But I also hope that even though we're only able to connect virtually and cannot meet in person, that you will use this as a vehicle for creating many of the kinds of rich connections uh, that I talked about just now. Okay, I'm going to now pass it back to Fola, who are going to introduce our next speakers, uh, one of whom, Hakim Bello Osage, is uh, one of the, uh, we're lucky to have on the SEED advisory board, and then Nancy Kachungira as well. Back to you, Fola. 